you with a big knife. Off you go. Oh. <laughs> this is very good. You're very professional. Soaking up the lumps and grumps really well, I find. How are you finding it on the board? I find the board is very flat and comfortable. Yep. And I feel like I can ease very smoothly through this. That's fantastic, that. Oh, good yeah, man. That. Job done. Excellent. Right, let's quit while we're ahead. I think we've made the point. The cube is one comfy car. Nissan says its asymmetric look has been created by design connoisseurs for design connoisseurs. Well, design connoisseurs obviously don't need a whopping great big boot because this is all there is. And they won't be winning awards either for this flimsy bit of material and strip of Velcro. But I'm not too bothered with that. What I am bothered with, though, are the options. One of which is this dashboard mat. And I quote, we love this fluffy mat. Just run your fingers through it at traffic lights and you'll see what we mean. The cost, £22. £22! Then there's the simple, practical and hard-wearing bands that give you some extra storage space. £11.25. Or how about this Whirlpool hook? Again, Nissan puts a spin on it, saying this clever little feature keeps keys within easy reach. £25. Here's a tip. Save yourself £58 on daft accessories and get yourself down the DIY superstore. I bought hooks, rubber bands and an entire bath mat set for £5. Bargain. If you're after something funky that's immensely practical, then Citroen's C3 Picasso is a better bet. And it's got a colossal boot. But if you want to stand out from the crowd of Minis and Fiat 500s out there, you love being stared at and you're not too bothered about having a sharp handling motor, then the Nissan Cube is perfect. Now, here's a quick shout-out for the Fifth Gear website, home to a massive database of reviews about every single car on sale. It's the place you'll see the newest cars tested first. So, check it out at 5.tv slash fifth gear. Still to come, how much help does a £180,000 supercar give you when you're on the black? I don't believe it. Welcome back to fifth gear. Now, this Lambo, with its massive 5.2-litre V10, represents the old way of doing things. You see, in these tree-stroking times, the trend is for manufacturers to fit smaller and smaller engines, even, as Johnny's been finding out, in very big cars. The S80 is Volvo's biggest, most luxurious saloon. At 16 feet long, it's an imposing piece of metal that you'd expect to have a beast of an engine. But it doesn't really. You see, this latest drive model is all about fuel economy. So under here is the engine equivalent of a pygmy shrew. A 108 brake horsepower, 1.6 turbo diesel engine, the smallest engine that Volvo put in any of their cars. It's not exactly the luxury that I had in mind. Incredibly, this icon of luxury transport, a 56-foot princess yacht, the sort of thing Duran Duran dreams are made of, is also powered by Volvo. It uses not one, but two 900 horsepower units. Premium goods these days are as much about eco-friendliness as they are poshness, which means that car there could be a role model in Luxo Eco Transport. To test the theory, I'm going to compare a 23 grand Volvo diesel against a 700 grand Volvo diesel in the ultimate test of modern luxury transportation. First category, greenness. This S80 will emit a measly 119 grams per kilometre of CO2 into the atmosphere. What's even more impressive is the fact that on a combined cycle, they reckon it'll do 62.8 miles to the gallon. While the 80s throwbacks lounge upstairs, the boat's brawn lurks below. Each one of these uses 35 gallons of fuel per hour, so this will use um, about a gallon every half mile. So, no surprises there then. The 1.6 car is more frugal than the 13-litre boat. Next, speed. 
With a 0 to 60 score of 11.7, the S80 Drive, lowercase e, isn't quite as slow as you might think. The only real problem tends to occur when you need to do some serious overtaking. There's a Mini Cooper D in front of me, and it keeps getting in my way, so I'm going to try and attempt to overtake. In any gear, at any speed, oh. the Mini Diesel is quicker. Oh dear. I can't see the police using these instead of their T5s anytime soon. This boat is capable of shifting. I mean, it can do 38 knots, which is fast on water. But that's about a third of the speed of the S80, which can do 118 mile an hour top speed. Saying that, one thing the Volvo doesn't have is 5,000 pounds feet of torque. That's impressive. Torque is the force that helps a machine accelerate. But even with so much grunt, the 22-ton yacht can't go faster than the 1.5-ton car. Next, style. It isn't the most stylish car to start with. It's a four-year-old design. But unlike some of its other Volvo drive models and those VW Blue Motion chariots, at least it doesn't have daft wheels and different weirdo grills to shout about its eco-credentials, which I like. Same's true in here. You'd never guess there was a peasant spec 1.6 up front. The materials, design and ergonomics are top class. It's just a bit beige and has a whiff of saga. But look at the boat. The leather chairs might be on par with the car, but the teak, stainless steel, glitzy fittings and awesome electric roof are in a different league. The boat wins the style award. But overall, which Volvo diesel technology do I think is the most modern form of luxury transport? Well, you may never quite forget you're driving a diesel, but thanks to this economy version's longer gearing and the S80's already comfortable ride, the car's refinement is surprisingly persuasive. They have gone quite a long way to convincing me that this can work, this sort of weird combination of utter thrift and a little sprinkling of luxury. Credit to Volvo, because what they've done with the S80 Drive is make something large and comfortable, but with an, an air of luxury about it, and something that means you don't have to live near a fuel station. Unfortunately, it won't make you feel like Simon Le Bon. At all. And so to the main event. To give it its full name, the Lamborghini Gallardo LP574 Superleggera. A 5.2 litre V10, 570 horsepower, 0 to 62 in 3.3 seconds, and a top speed of 202 miles an hour. So, should we kick it in the balls then? God, you can get yourself into trouble in this thing.